Channel 40 on the radio. All right. All right, I'll see you soon. of really deep water crossings which is exciting and still a very slippery surface. Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear Overland in Australia. A new episode for a new adventure here in central New South Wales. Lee took on a short-term work contract on a large-scale cropping property. It's time for the next adventure. The opportunity is there for me to uh, top up the savings to assist us in continuing this journey for as long as we possibly can. This one's quite exciting and another one that's been on my bucket list. I'm Ian, I work for Kane and Marie. Today we're moving our planter from one property to the other. It's about 100 kilometers between the two properties. The length of the machine is about 36 meters folded up. We'll be cruising at around about 24 kilometers an hour. So a nice <laughs> cruisy day. Ian is the man responsible for us being here on this uh, awesome farm. It's a cropping operation. So seeding and harvesting. We're here to, be, to get involved in the seeding. Ian had followed our YouTube channel and our adventures for a couple of years. When he saw that we were working on our journey around Australia, he kindly reached out, sent us a message on Instagram and said that they are looking for people to drive machinery. I will be driving that thing in uh, the seating operation. I'm bloody excited. I've already driven it. Its name is Big Blue. I better get in the car and get ready. I'm driving the lead escort vehicle over here, the 79, and Steffi is in the 200 series at the back there, rear escort. I'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in about four hours, I guess, maybe more, at the other end. All three of us will be in UHF radio communication. Frenchie, Frenchie, you got a radio check. Copy. Very important job. I need to be at the front there directing traffic. If required, I will have to block off the road and hold up the traffic. later we are still going 100 kilometers and almost five hours later we made it to the second farm we made it we're standing in a paddock of sorghum ready to be harvested you can see further out where the head has been and we just pulled up for the weekend it's um, predominantly used for stock feed this is transported about 350 kilometers to a big place that wholesales it out from their bulk depot then the, the dark stuff is the uh, is the husk that comes off the grain. It's just a shell, and then you've got the red grain. Popped sorghum is a popular snack in India. In Africa, they use it to make some alcohols. In China, sorghum flour is used in combination with wheat flour to make noodles and breads. Most varieties are drought and heat tolerant. 17 out of 25 species of sorghum are native to this country, Australia. Today, we are going to be filling up the air cart with seed. The entire system is linked to the, the tractor right at the front there through a computer system and a dosing rate. So they'll know exactly how much canola seeds are getting planted per hectare. He's aiming for 1.8 kilograms per hectare. This massive planter that's behind me here, it's planting the canola seeds. So it digs a little trench, then puts the seed in it and then rolls a little bit of dirt on top. Kane is in the background here now and he's checking, he's scraping there with a screwdriver and looking at exactly what's going on. He wants to see what depth the seed is at. Is it putting enough soil back on top? And if there are any minor adjustments to be made, he can do that all via the computer in the tractor up there. It's all very very interesting stuff the first day that i think i will be driving the massive planter unsupervised feeling good a little bit nervous of course it's a bloody big machine and
13 kilometers an hour, but it feels fast in this thing. And sometimes you've got to drive around the trees or do a full 360 around them and plant seeds all the way around them. But yeah, you've got to be very careful. And there's also power line poles out in the paddock. That's my little tractor. Cruising along in the green is what I've done. So it's about 11 p.m. and my shift for the day is finished. 2 a.m. and I'm about to start shift and I'll do, I guess, 12 hours, 14 hours. So yeah, very interesting, just keep going. The second week now working here, this morning, I'm driving the service truck. It's got on board everything that you need to do to perform some maintenance. I'll drive down to the tractor that I'm gonna be operating today, still planting canola. And there's my baby. <laughs> This is the service truck I was telling you guys about. We've got a generator up there, we've got an air compressor, four and a half thousand litre diesel tank on the back, grease guns, just everything we need for maintenance. So that's what I'll be doing now, is doing the greasing of the tractor, filling up with diesel, probably 1,400 litres of diesel, and blowing it down with some air, getting ready for another big day in the paddock. Well, this looks interesting. Grizzly and Bear, it's gonna be the escort vehicle, rear escort vehicle. Exciting and a little bit nerve wracking for me. We've got the big move to make back from the farm we're at where we've been planting the canola back to the main farm, 100 kilometers. The boss, Kane, has asked me if I'm confident to drive the, the big rig. A little bit nervous. I've been driving this tractor now for a week. No problem at all, uh, confidence is high out in the paddock. I gotta drive straight through the middle of Canamble, but it's all good because I'm gonna have Steffi and Kane's wife Marie escorting me and keeping me right on the road. I just gotta remember not to cut any corners. <laughs> Just because I wasn't quite nervous enough to drive the uh, big blue, just before we left, Marie actually noticed and said to Kane, one of those tires looks a little bit flat. Yep, we had a, uh, a flat tire and it's all, of course the most difficult one to get to on the double tires, uh, like this tractor's got the inside one, it was completely off the rim. Just to test the, uh, the skills in this tractor, I've had to drive into the tyre place and the bloke out there now is going to take off and replace, I guess, try and uh, get it back on the rim. Hopefully a repair job, not a replace job. A few hours later, the tyre was patched and we were back on the road. A big week driving this tractor. Thoroughly enjoying it still. I thought it was gonna get a little bit monotonous and boring, but it doesn't actually. Uh, we are back. Just been informed by Kane that I'm gonna start work at 2 a.m. So it's now 7 p.m. Right now we are racing against a weather window. All right, here we go, 2 a.m. So I've let Kane away. He's off to try and get some sleep. He's up the speed. He wants this done. The rain is on its way. We have a deadline. This is the main farm, another 3,000 acres with a stunning view over the Warren Bungle. Lee is driving the tractor and I'm staying in our camper, a full-time home I should say, working and editing videos. The weather is about to change. The soil is getting humid, softer. As a result, the seed truck got bogged, but quickly and easily rescued. All of the planting for the moment is on hold because of the weather. 
it's not only that it's not good for the seed, but the tractors get completely bogged and it just makes a mess of the paddocks. So we're going to go for a little tour. It could be four or five days, maybe even a week before we start planting the wheat again. Had to get my phone charger out of the tractor. Could be dangerous. I think it's about 18 kilometers of very slippy and muddy road to try and get to the bitumen from the farm. I'm not sure this is a good idea. <laughs> We're destroying the driveway. I know we can get out, but do we really need to be going anywhere just because we feel like we should be going on an adventure at the risk of we already are wrecking their driveway. We're we having second stop. Jeez, that's bloody deep. Steffi just reminded me actually, I'd forgot all about it, is I'm gonna put it in uh, off-road mode on the airbags. So that'll give us another couple of inches of lift. That's, I think it's the first time we've had water above the bonnet. That was pretty full on. <laughs> we made it back to the bitumen. Bitumen, bitumen. <laughs> we made it back to the road. Yeah. Well, it was good fun actually. I'm glad we went for it. We considered not going there for a little while, but actually the main road, it was actually just um, uh, Kane and Marie's driveway that was a little bit soft, still feeling guilty. Sorry guys. Uh, Ian, you'll just have to jump on the grader and sort out the mess we made. Our back end was sliding a lot of times there, just having to alter and correct, but hell of a lot of fun. We will end the episode here at the car wash. We hope you enjoyed it. Next time, we will take you on a busy trip to Sydney. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.